Hello and welcome to another live code hangout. Today we are working on the Western Friend website. We're going to start a new pull request working on the issue to use PayPal as our payment processor. We've made significant progress so far. The code has been merged. It was a large pull request to basically port our bookstore e-commerce payments and subscriptions over to PayPal. As a follow-up, I want to create a small PayPal donate button that can be placed on pages, arbitrary pages. So let's go ahead and uh, create a new branch. Make sure we've got everything from the main. <clears throat> And I believe um, this is going to be, I have to decide how best to approach this. Essentially, on my other screen here, I've got a PayPal donation widget pre-created. The way PayPal wants you to do it is copy and paste some code. It's not secret, so we can take a look at the code over here real quick. I will create a template. Now I did that. Let's see. Oh no, that's correct. It's just using commas. PayPal blocks. Okay, so this could be donation blocks. Let's see. Essentially, this gets published in the client code. It includes a small script inline script as well as the PayPal donate SDK and it's the code is could be parameterized it's essentially you just need this button ID and an image so this is interesting that the image potentially could be Could be customized so i could use this just as a block and it'll trigger a modal <clears throat> this amount of um html could go just in our site header for example i could try putting it there let me first try that just see how it looks there's a first pass it might be the simplest oops i just realized one thing update the stream details and take a look here wagtail social network okay that's interesting we'll come back to that need some installation instructions it's another open source project so so this code for example we're running here on localhost I currently don't have anything in the collapsible section of the site so we could include a paypal button somewhere there it'd be kind of cool if it was persistent if i put it over here and uh even if the website in full it would still be there let's give it a try see if that'll work so for that we can just go to our core nav bar templates after the nav bar collapse section be something like this and if i just refresh we get a donate button right there where i was kind of hoping it would go yeah and with just a little bit of padding there <laughs> and then it uh, opens a popover I think it's a good start. So basically, let's so pop back over here. And let's just say, see if this works. Margin left, utility three. No, that's cool. We can do margin right. That looks okay. Yeah, I'd like it to sort of go back on the right hand side of the search button. Here's the search button. I'm just seeing. Okay, we're just using flex nav item. And it's inside of the nav bar collapse. D flex. Let's grab a open API chat here. So, got the following bootstrap 
five navbar definition in the Django project and just paste it all in, including the donate button. I would like to, for the donate button to always be visible, so I've left it outside of the navbar collapse section, which worked as expected. However, now I'd like to add a small amount of margin between the donate button and the navbar collapse section, since they seem to be positioned too closely. All right, now ChatGPT is in super slow mo here. To add a small amount of margin between the donate button and the navbar collapse section. Interesting. Ah, I see. Yeah, where I got that from. You can use an inline style. Yeah, it makes sense. I would like to use a bootstrap class. Just I'm all in on bootstrap on this here. But yeah, we could try that just to see if it works. Donate button container. Ah, not recommended for quick testing. In our CSS, that's a good way of doing it. Now. for quick testing. Ooh, got too much. 20 pixels, so we would use an M value, of course, as well. This is just to uh, see if it will work. Take this margin off, because that didn't seem to work. All right, now we will go to full screen. That works, so I wonder why the, oh, I know why. I'm using left and right, and Bootstrap 5 uses start and end. So MS, margin start, two M values. Let's see if this works, of course. It's more internationalized that way. Ah. All right, let's put it in our CSS. Now for that, we have CSS and our static CSS web, WF website. Donate button container margin left. Let's say three M's values. That's a lot. One M, not too bad. And you know, it does its thing. Very cool. Be right quick. I'll back right. Be right back. Quickly refresh my beverage. It's just tonic water and lime. Now let's try something. I'm going to try this picture. So if I send a picture, I'll get print screen here, a new screenshot, and we will just at the navigation menu here. It's hard to tell. There we go. And I'll just save it to my desktop. I don't normally do that, but now with GPT, we can oops, include images and such. So it worked great. Now I'd like for the button to be vertically centered in the nav bar, as can be seen in the neighboring elements pictured. So let's see how well it can interpret this picture of our nav bar. To vertically center the donate button within the nav bar, you can use various CSS techniques like Flexbox or CSS Grid. Since Bootstrap 5 already utilizes Flexbox, it would be easier to go with that. Here's how you can vertically center the donate button container. Inline style approach. Add the style attribute directly to the donate button. Display flex, align items, center, margin left. So we're just combining these or in our external CSS file. Display flex line items center. This should vertically center your donate button with respect to the neighboring elements in the nav bar. Make sure to link the CSS file in your HTML if you haven't already. I have already, so that's good to go. Cool, let's hop back over and see what happens. Didn't seem to didn't seem to work. Inspectoroo. The donate button. The donate button div is seemingly it's a little bit hard to tell but it has something going on there well i can try just nudging it the flex box approach did why are we not in a flex container might not be in a flex context it should be implicitly using flex box but there's always just a, you know adding a little bit of bottom margin you know just tweaking it manually looks good to me Okay, let's go with that. So essentially, for the first pass, I can hard code it. More complicated solution would be a couple options. One, make this wag a wagtail block that can just be popped into any page or <clears throat> content set used throughout the site. 
two, I could create a new setting that you could kind of copy and paste the um, custom generated PayPal code into, and it would display it here. It's a bit of a foot gun. You could paste arbitrary stuff and then the nav bar would kind of break. The wagtail block, it would l at least be possible to control that. It, for example, I don't have to let the editor modify the code, even the campaign link. But here, I'm just gonna go with the very minimal thing and just put, put it here. I'm leaving it out of the nav bar collapse so that it's always visible. Even if you open the nav bar, you still will see the donate button. And in order to do that, it would have to be before everything or after everything. I don't think we necessarily want it before everything. If we want it on the nav bar, you know, we could also potentially put it here in the sky. It's just kind of weird. Probably more tricky placement. I would prefer to keep things simple. And since this isn't really gonna be changing, I'm just gonna hard code it in there. Because I didn't see an easy way to get the, the hosted button ID from the website that a non-technical person would be using. And I'm already logged out. So yes, we're going to go with persistent PayPal. And I've, of course, named this block, but it's not really what we're doing here. Add PayPal donate button. Dang it. There we go. And it looks like my HTML is formatted. It's a bit annoying that the... Uh, padding has to be added there I and mean, it staggers it from the other elements. The other way would be to add the padding there. Okay, let's take a look real quick at that, that approach. That is the nav bar. Expanded container. navbar collapse. That's right, so if I do instead, I uh, do hash navbar collapse. Now I'll just give myself a little note here. Separate the navbar collapse and donate button. That's strange. Well, I didn't really change anything there. Oh man. My chest broke. Something else, but that's weird. Let's rerun that. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. All right. Good, I got that detail. Not sure how. I just wasn't paying attention. It's a gold button, always present, even if you go into mobile. Mobile device mode. See a nice donate button there. That's interesting. Popped it out side of the window. So we'll hop back over to the pull request. We'll, we'll run all the tests and keep the database. Or we'll grab a little bit more tonic and lime. Seems that when I toggle the visibility of the camera, it freezes. I'll fix that by having an AFK scene. But enjoy a little bit of tonic and lime. So all the tests run successfully here. There's just some brittleness in how our factories are constructing users and some of the setups leading to non or constraint, unique constraint violation what it looks like they ran successfully this time code QL is a bit slow in any case I like this solution because it didn't require a lot of thinking and coding and unit tests Out of curiosity it would be nice to change the button Let's see what this looks like
What are the alternative buttons I can use? PayPal, e.g. PayPal offers several types of buttons for donations that you can use, ranging from small to large and sometimes with different wordings. The URL structure for these buttons usually remains consistent, allowing for some level of customization. Here are some alternative URLs for the PayPal donate buttons. A large button, credit cards small, credit cards large, with text, with PayPal logo small. Interesting. Let's see what the large button does. I'd like, you know, we want people to donate and recurring if possible. So this should be eye catching. And this could be a configuration option as well. Donate. Uh, that's a bit much. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Well, the thing is the other, like the logout button is, these aren't really buttons, but I mean, the text is proportional. It's just strong. Oof, ah, it's so bad. I don't see how they could have such bad style. Yeah, and I wish it would just show me the buttons. Show me the buttons. See, that doesn't look so bad. The pill, this is more proportional. I like that. Call to action. And perhaps in the footer. Let's go with it. We'll just say closes 906. So yeah, I only have two significant issues currently active, at least during the staging. And there's only five issues in staging. We can do this pull request during this session. This is actually for me. I'll do that real quick after we merge this. I'll go ahead and merge it now. It, it did run the tests, succeeded, and I just changed the GIF. So merging, confirming the merge. Good. Who's that? And essentially our shipping and handling costs. Not super elegant, but it's very simple. We just, I've got it hard coded because these need to be mutually exclusive, uh, non overlapping ranges. The prices need to be defined somewhere. And I couldn't think of a way of doing that in the user interface that allows us to configure them. So it Great pull request, closes 910. Hop over here. Tests, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, and it's per it seems expensive. All right, I don't know, it's a bug. QL still being in process. So back to the issues. I think we're kind of done for today. If we go to the milestone, staging milestone, which is where we are, I'll just post an update here to the staging website. I think it's donate, where we should now be displaying our new, sorry, subscribe magazine where we showed <laughs> showing our new subscribe buttons. Good. And as we'll have to discuss how to bring over the magazine subscribers from the Drupal site. So we'll take that up during our weekly call, but probably have to do a data export and then just some, you know, use our tools. We got like MailChimp or, you know, bulk communication. I can bulk import email addresses and set randomized passwords for people to reset their password. We'll need a, a mail service.
we need to do this during staging. It's already set. I need to set it up. Yeah, we just needed either an IMAP account or a transactional email service, something. Yeah, but I think we're pretty good for today. Just on the hour. This has been another live code hangout. We're getting the Western Friend project uh, pretty close to launch, it feels like. Uh, you know, it was a bit surprising to do the to re <laughs> work the payment provider during staging of the phase of the project. So I'm not 100% uh, confident that we're gonna, confident that we're going to launch to this at this point. Even <laughs> could be some other really big gotcha that comes up. But so it goes. If you'd like to get involved with this or a similar projects, so you can swing by GitHub. We're at github.com slash westernfriend, WF website. We have several non-urgent tasks that are marked as help wanted. A lot of these are even good first issues that would be kind of small in scope and maybe could just be closed with a comment like, uh, no longer valid. Some of these are lint level things that could have already been fixed or could be very easy to fix. So do check those out. We have several contributors active right now. And we are grateful to all the contributors who have helped us out along the way. All right. Well, I hope you're doing well and have a great day.